talking about Africa, and we'll be talking about what other kind of things, social activities that the corporations could do, as well as the individuals could do. My name is Yoko Ishikura. I am a freelancer. I'm independent, uh, doing a lot of things lately. And uh, it's I have uh, hosted this Davos experience in Tokyo over two years. And we would like to, first of all, thank uh, the people of HP, because this is such a great uh, setup with the, the great view of uh, Tokyo, uh, Skytree, and other things. This is the first time that I've been to this part of Tokyo. And uh, I think that's, that's, a, that's a great uh, location. It's a little bit far, but uh, it's a great location. Uh, what we would like to do today, this is our uh, action plan for the day. Um, first of all, we will have uh, Yoko Nakaji, uh, Nagashima of HP explaining a little bit about what HP has been doing for, uh, as one of their social activities, and particularly the focus with a focus on conflict minerals in the Democratic uh, Republic of Congo, which is located in Africa. I had to check the, the, the map of Africa to find out where. Uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo is. And I, uh, I'm not sure, how many of you have been to Africa? Quite a few, as a matter of fact, for this group. I suppose that those who are interested in Africa may have uh, applied for this session in particular. But I thought probably some of you have heard of Africa, but have a very little idea as to what it is like. And we were very lucky to have a special guest, uh, Hiroko Samajima, who, is, who founded Andua Met. And uh, she, is, she has a, now a company in uh, Ethiopia. I just happened to meet with her right before I went to Ethiopia for the first time two years ago. And I got to know her. And uh, after I found out what she does there, and went to uh, Ethiopia. I was very, very impressed because Ethiopia is one of the poorest countries in Africa. And uh, you, you really don't find too many things available. But anyway, that, so she just happened to be in Tokyo this time. So I asked her whether she could come so that we can have a little more exposure to different parts of Africa. And that's, that's what it is. And uh, so what we would like to do today is that we will have uh, uh, Yoko-san's uh, presentation at the beginning, and then I asked uh, uh, Hiroko-san to do a little bit of presentation about what she does, and then we would like you to think about some ideas as to how we can make a contribution, how we can make sure that we, are, we can do something about this, these type of social activities. And about 9, 9, 15 or so, uh, probably if we have time, uh, we may go around and do the, the report back session. But since some of the, the subways are now uh, and are not running smoothly, as smoothly as they should be, so quite a few people are still somewhere in Tokyo <laughs> trying to get here. And, but at the same time, we have to get out of this place, like 9, 15, 9, 30 or so, so we're going to move for those who are interested in going out after that, uh, because we're not really having the networking activities in here uh, uh, because of the limitations, uh, we will go somewhere and probably do a little bit of uh, sort of networking. But you have to pay individually if you're interested. So that's our plan. And uh, it, let me now introduce the, the today's guest. But before then, how many of you are from HP? OK. So these are the people, if you want to ask something about HP or uh, corporate uh, social activities that HP does, these are the, the resident experts. OK? And uh, if we want to find out what's, what's available around here, they are the, the experts. OK, with that note, uh, how many of you are, or this is the first time, Okay, quite a few. I think more than half. Usually about half and half. So welcome, and I hope that you will have fun. So with that note, let me turn over things to Yoko Nagashima, and who is going to tell us a little bit about uh, HP's social activities. Thank you. 
distinguished presenter. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Yoko Nagashima. Uh, I'm uh, in charge of HP Social Environmental Responsibility. And uh, part of my role is to introduce what HP is doing uh, in social environmental, or uh, in other words, CSR field, to uh, mainly Japanese uh, customers or uh, general public. So uh, for today, I would like to introduce HP's actions uh, and challenges uh, about conflict minerals. And uh, the word conflict minerals, I think many of you are not familiar with. So I would like to first uh, introduce what it is and then go into uh, HP's actions. So uh, regarding conflict minerals, uh, Actually, this conflict minerals issue is relevant to everyone's everyday life. I'm sure every one of you has those products. Uh, computers, mobile phones, printers. Is, does anyone not having those products? I think everyone has. But uh, how about those products like toys or uh, jewelries, golden rings? Uh, or vehicle and medical uh, treatment, airplane, those also use the metal so-called conflict minerals. Even your teeth, if you have golden teeth, uh, that's also part of conflict minerals. So uh, what are they? Actually, they are four metals, and regardless of whether uh, where they are from or if or not they are involved in the conflict, those four metals are main, uh, called as conflict minerals. And uh, so there are four, uh, tantalum, tungsten, uh, tin, and gold. So uh, those uh, metals are widely uh, used in many industries and uh, also uh, used in the, our industry, electronics. For example, tantalum is used for condenser and tungsten is uh, necessary for vibration of the mobile phone or even used in the light bulb filament. And tin uh, is used in very wide range of uh, industry. Uh, for electronics, it is used in soda in Japanese uh, Honda. So it, it's mixed with the uh, lead, namari, and uh, becomes soda to connect uh, each cables inside the electronics. And that, I think everyone uh, knows gold. Uh, in the uh, electronics, it's also very important. Actually, I have a, a, a circulate in the uh, yeah, plastic bottle, including the uh, crushed uh, electronics and also uh, magnets. So if you you can yeah, uh, if you could uh, circulate around and yeah, shake it or yeah, use the magnet, please enjoy it. And, and uh, your, during your break, uh, you can uh, have a look at the demo over there. Uh, it has the it is the demo of a recycling ink cartridges and also what's inside the printer. But it's same as computer as well. And uh, if you imagine the like uh, inkjet printer's print head, there is gold. Uh, there is a golden part and it's really gold. Or your mobile phone also uh, contains gold. According to our recycler, uh, recently there are less and less uh, gold inside the mobile phone, so they are not happy. They, they say the previous uh, old uh, mobile phone had more gold. Uh, than current ones. Okay, so uh, to make those four short, uh, we uh, those uh, metals are sometimes called as 3TG, uh, so 3T and 1G, so uh, those are uh, called as 3TG uh, yeah, together, and they are conflict minerals. So where does uh, it come from? Uh, there are many uh, sources of those uh, metals, and uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo that is uh, located at the center of Africa uh, is not the largest uh, source of those conflict minerals, but still uh, they are rich in uh, minerals. And uh, uh, the characteristic of those uh, mines in 
this area is it's relatively easy to take the aura, uh, aura uh, that is the stone, including those metals. Uh, it's uh, easy to uh, pick up those things because it's really close to the surface and it's exposure, exposed to the, uh, the air. So everyone can pick up the stone and put it in the back and sell it for their everyday life. Uh, so you don't need a large uh, machine uh, to uh, dig the uh, lamp to uh, pick up such metals. So uh, like you can see uh, in this area, uh, miners, you uh, manually uh, pick up the, such uh, stones to uh, pick up uh, the metals. So uh, yeah, by the way, here are the pictures uh, in Congo that are taken uh, by uh, HP's uh, Conflict Minerals Program Manager uh, at the uh, Congo. So those are uh, mines, yeah, those, and those people are uh, gold miners. And what's the conflict in Conflict Minerals? Uh, that is the uh, conflict uh, happening in the Democratic Republic of Congo and the surrounding nine countries uh, in the center of Africa. And it is said this conflict has been continued for more than or even closer to two decades. And uh, this uh, conflict has uh, started uh, from uh, the conflict between uh, Hutu and Tutsi uh, in the neighbor countries and uh, uh, this uh, conflict continues in the uh, DRC. I do not uh, go into the detail, but uh, this is impacting uh, the safety of this area. So uh, though currently in DRC, uh, there's armed force uh, that, is, uh, that are threatening the human rights of the uh, residents around uh, this country. And in the conflict minerals field, uh, some NGO uh, yeah, request the electronics companies to uh, provide conflict-free uh, products. But actually, uh, as I mentioned, conflict uh, minerals are used in many industries. So uh, I ICT industries is not the largest consumer of uh, such conflict minerals. For example, yeah, we use 15% uh, of the whole tantalum, but for uh, tin, uh, it's like 0.1%. Uh, it's you even used in the uh, toys or uh, yeah, glasses or uh, yeah, uh, clothes, clothing as well. So it's used in many places. And now uh, in the conflict minerals, it's important to know about the supply chain. And in the electronics industry, uh, yeah, you need to imagine this uh, supply chain uh, that is uh, from mine to uh, finished product. So, um, sorry. yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, from mine, uh, there is a, this kind of uh, stone picked up, and then it's melted at smelter or refiner, and becomes, uh, in this case, uh, mixed with lead, so it becomes uh, solder uh, handa, and then uh, it, it's used as a PCB that is printed circuit board, uh, that is uh, the board uh, with the circuit, circle, uh, yeah, uh, circuit. Uh, inside the electronics, and then it is uh, yeah, it could used in the electronics. So in that way, uh, there is a uh, chain of uh, many uh, stakeholders, companies, until uh, from mine to the, the finished product. So what's the problem? Um, in the uh, supply chain, as I've mentioned, uh, at the uh, mine, uh, there is a human rights violation uh, by the armed forces. So they threaten the local people and uh, force uh, them uh, to uh, pick up the uh, such stones, or uh, they, uh, yeah, uh, there is extortion of uh, such uh, output from the mine, or there is illegal export, and those armed forces use uh, such uh, uh, ore to uh, buy the uh, weapons, so that's the issue. And after uh, the mining, there is an issue of supply chain transparency. So uh, there is conflict in Congo, they are threatening people and buying the weapons with uh, the money obtained. So what, what's the solution? 
So one is one of the solutions some people may come uh, come up with to uh, the, some people's mind is no metals, not buying anything from Congo. That's one of the kind of extreme solution. But our answer or uh, electronics industry's answer is no, because if everybody stops uh, purchasing the metals from Congo, that will threaten the uh, people uh, living in uh, the living around. The mines or living in the mining industry with the, who are not involved in Congo. Those good people are also threatened. So uh, no, not buying Congo anything sounds uh, very easy, but uh, we need to also help uh, the good people uh, living in the mining industry of Congo. So that's the very difficult thing, but uh, something uh, such a finished product industry have to consider. So uh, yeah, those are the basic, and uh, yeah, I would like to briefly introduce what HP is doing. Actually, HP uh, is uh, normally positioned as finished product uh, manufacturer. Can't find the photo, but yeah, at the uh, yeah uh, right side, uh, HP is a finished product manufacturer. However, uh, it works in the uh, whole uh, supply chain, including the mines in Africa. So HP uh, works with other stakeholders like NGOs or local governments and other electronics company, uh, even going to the Africa, uh, uh, build the uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, a public-private alliance, and also uh, help the closed pipe, uh, yeah, uh, sourcing uh, from the Con DRC Con Congo. And one of the example of the uh, uh, yeah, activities at the mine uh, level is tagging the ore uh, at the mine. So uh, this is those uh, yeah uh, soil. Is contains the metal, uh, so the people put it in the bag and tag and close it, and then only the tagged bag can be sold legally, so that uh, the transparency of the uh, yeah uh, those uh, supply chain is kept. So uh, but this tag proves uh, the this soil comes from the good uh, sourcing without uh, conflict. Yeah. And the next step is the conflict-free smelter program. In this conflict minerals uh, program, smelter is very important. So HP is, uh, and also other electronics company, uh, take the lead to uh, ensure that those smelters are doing good and those smelters are sourcing uh, the ore from good uh, mines, not involved in the conflict. And the reason why smelters are important is there are uh, small numbers of smelters compared to the mines or compared to the finished uh, goods or compared to the parts manufacturing companies. So uh, if we make uh, sure that those smelters are good, we can make sure those uh, other uh, supply chain is also good. So the, the smelter is a key for complex minerals. So for this reason, HP and other companies are uh, helping uh, the smelters to be uh, to be audited and uh, have the certificate that this smelter is good. And actually, uh, Japanese companies, uh, mainly the recycling companies, are also certified in this conflict-free uh, smelter program. You can f uh, find a lot of Japanese companies, and the number of certified uh, yeah, smelters are increasing. Uh, actually, doubled in from 2013 to 14. And uh, we, uh, HP, believe that out of uh, 152 smelters certified, uh, 22 of them are from DRC and surrounding countries. So uh, we are uh, meeting our uh, goals for those two, 22 uh, com companies. And the final step is the uh, due diligence. Uh, this is the uh, making sure from smelter to fi uh, finished uh, product company that uh, everything is uh, sourced from the good smelter. So uh, we uh, yeah, actually we request from the finished product to uh, the smelter and then smelter submit uh, uh, yeah, uh, which uh, their name and the parts manufacturer provide which smelter the metals are coming from. 
So it's really huge uh, information uh, transfer. And uh, HP's goal is to uh, make majority of 3TG uh, production uh, is purchased from conflict-free uh, smelters by the end of next year. And we established this uh, standard Excel sheet to pass on the uh, information. The, the challenge here is the supply chain is really complex and spread around the globe. Uh, from uh, finished product to the uh, smelter. So uh, this makes the issue very complex, time consuming, um, a lot of errors and, and uh, we work, but still uh, we are trying. Yeah. So uh, because the, those things take cost, if uh, the consumers or uh, business customers choose conflict-free companies, that would be the great help. Um, if uh, the, the uh, consumers only choose the product with the price only, uh, that will not be the help for the uh, companies trying to good to good. So from consumer's perspective, if you uh, understand such effort uh, behind the scene, that will, uh, I'm so yeah, glad. Other possible actions are increasing awareness of this issue and enhancing recycling, not mining, uh, or collaboration beyond industry. So not only electronics, but also more, um, automotive or uh, yeah, construction, any industry using uh, metals, and also efficient, low cost, uh, easy information transfer using IT. Those are, I think, uh, possible other actions. So uh, that's all. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Now we know a little bit about what conflict minerals are and what are the issues. And now I would like to uh, invite uh, Yoko-san to explain her business in Ethiopia. One of the issues that we would like you to think about after her presentation is that um, I think uh, Nagashima-san mentioned how do we make sure that more people are aware of the issue. Because we don't even know. We use or we consume these things without really knowing that it, it's, it uses the conflict uh, minerals. And in the, along the same lines, we, we hear about this ethical fashion. How many of you have heard the term ethical fashion? OK, so, or uh, free trade goods, like coffee and all these other things. And the, the question is, how do we make sure that the people are aware of what they are, the real thing? Because once ethical fashion or free trade goods become very popular and widely known, a lot of people would like to jump onto that bandwagon. And they start talking about, I am doing ethical fashion, assuming that people will buy their products simply because it's called ethical fashion. But that means that we always have those people who may not be actually involved with ethical fashion, but they call it ethical fashion. So how do we make sure that we, we have we increase or we raise the self-awareness of the people for the right kind of things. And I think that's what uh, uh, Nagashima-san was talking about, making the supply chain and making all these things visible by using the IT and so forth. But I think uh, now she's ready. So let me turn over things to you. Thank you very much for the uh, I'm Hiroko Samajima, a founder and chief designer of Andromed uh, Limited. Our company is producing leather bags uh, in Ethiopia and selling in Japan. These are our products. All of uh, those bags are very light and very soft. Colorful and unique. So before I explain about my business, uh, let me introduce about myself. Uh, I started my career as a designer at domestic cosmetic company. I was planning at, 
and design them for new products every day. But uh, sometimes uh, I felt uh, I was very tired for producing for mass production. And I wanted something uh, uh, better for social. Then I joined uh, JOCB, Japan Overseas Corporation Volunteer. I went to Ethiopia and I found uh, many potential in Ethiopia. Uh, there was very beautiful weather and uh, craftsman. So I started this business uh, in 2012. Uh, does anyone know about Ethiopia? Have you ever been to Ethiopia? Uh, no. Mainly, uh, Ethiopia is very famous for poverty, one of the poorest countries in Ethiopia. But at the same time, uh, they are very beautiful. They are, uh, uh, Ethiopia is the origin of human being, and uh, uh, they have very long history, uh, beautiful nature and cultures. And, uh, uh, the number of livestock is the biggest in the Africa and tens in the world. Uh, labor of Ethiopian sheep skin is the best quality in the world. For example, my Baha, uh, I don't know the exact pronunciation for that, but one of the most luxurious cars in the world use Ethiopian sheep skin for the sheep of their car. Robes for tiger roots, handbags for super brand, and so on. Ethiopian sheepskin is used for many top grade products. However, due to lack of skills and knowledge of the craftsmen and weak infrastructure, the country is forced to forced to export leather as a raw material at cheap price. And those leather are turned and or produced to uh, final product, uh, which has uh, added value in developed country. Uh, Ethiopia has the best weather in the world, but they don't uh, uh, receive the uh, profit from them. Don't you think it's unfortunate? It's very, 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 very modern. Uh, I thought so. Then I established uh, uh, my brand. Andamet is uh, building Ethiopia's craftsman's skill and uh, confidence to product, produce, export highly valued added uh, final products, and, uh, which eventually lead to the development of Ethiopia uh, leather industry. So I can say the brand is established by the combination of Ethiopia's resource and Japan's resource. And the concept of our brand is happy. When you have a, our back, I think you feel it. Let me introduce about the secret of this happiness. The first uh, material. We are using the best weather. It is very smooth like silk and very light like a feather. Uh, very comfortable when you touch it. And we are using it not only for body, but also handle, bottom, and lining as well. Our second secret is design. Inspired by African sense of color and the beauty of traditional Japanese art and craft. The final secret is process. Uh, give conservation to society and the environment in all process, including planning, procurement, uh, materials, manufacturing, and sales. Uh, today I don't have enough time, so I can't explain in detail for each process, but uh, uh, we have some uh, something uh, like this. So by through this uh, process and uh, other secrets, customers are also happy 
and producer are also happy, and designer myself also happy. So all of uh, all of these people can feel happy. So this is uh, what I'm thinking. So our long term goal is to become a high end luxury brand which set new standard of luxury. Yes, yes. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I didn't explain at the first. And Ahmed uh, is uh, Amharic, it's Ethiopian word. Uh, it means one year. Uh, because most of the product, uh, the first time it's very beautiful, but uh, year by year it becomes dirty. But uh, we are using the best leather, year by year it becomes beautiful, like uh, ourselves like human beings and other things. So I feel this uh, has value, so I made a name like this. Thank you very much. Okay, now you heard uh, two stories. One uh, by the corporation, uh, in order to make sure that the Africa will develop in the right way by capitalizing what they have at the same time in a very human, uh, humanistic way rather than the human rights uh, violations. So that's the, the HP's uh, activities and initiatives for the, uh, the conflict minerals. And you also heard one individual's effort to bring about the uh, employment to the, the most, uh, the poorest country in Africa at the same time making the best of what they have and try to produce value added, added value for them rather than taking them and exploit it. So now you have heard two stories. Now it's your turn to think about the way how we can make sure that the people become aware of these issues and in the right way. So on one hand, you know, we have a lot of people who may say that we're doing all sorts of things in Africa, but how true, how really fact-based they are they? And so uh, you can think of any, any way to make sure that, uh, you know, we become much more aware of what's important and so that we can do something about it. Clear? Okay, you have about... Uh, half an hour to think up the, the ideas and you can use this um, pad and uh, just come up with a lot of different ideas and if you want to be more specific about either sort of undo a met case or HP case that, that's fine too but you can broaden it and come from you know, a much broader sort of over general kind of perspective. And I think that may be a very good way of doing it. And if you would like to call these presenters, please do so because they can ask they can answer any questions you want. Okay? Okay. Your turn. Question. My question is that uh, make try to come up with the ideas, creative ideas, to make public aware of what these social activities are, whether that's ethical fashion or the the corporate, uh, com you know, reducing or doing something about the conflict memos. Yeah, well, that, that's one way. But you, you can also think about the way that ethical fashion or the, the conflict minerals, what exactly does it mean, what we could do about it in the right way. Okay? <laughs>